Well, hello there. Everybody keeps asking me why I keep wearing blue shirts. It says, is your favorite color blue? It's like, well, yes, it is. I have a lot of shirts that are not blue. These are just happen to be the ones that I wear in video. <laughs> um, of all the countless thousands of videos that I've made on magnetism, the one that people keep asking me in live stream that I've not made a video about is about the Earth's magnetosphere. I'd like to actually uh, talk about a few secrets uh, and get to that one on the Earth's magnetosphere, you know, because all of so-called science thinks that the Earth is emanating the Earth's magnetosphere, and that's not the case. Well, then where is it coming from? And the answer is very simple, and anybody can actually do this themselves. They have a powerful magnet at home. I kind of don't want to get near my iPad or my computer, but uh, <clears throat> um, one of the things that I discovered, I'm going to get to the Earth's magnetosphere, here very quickly in just a few seconds and I actually brought in a low friction gyroscope that I has made in England actually and the company kind of went out of business I wish that had a cage around it because when it actually starts to process and it rolls over the actual brass flywheel will hit the table or whatever you know it's resting on and then it will decelerate rather than flipping so that's unfortunate but uh, they used to make little cheap gyroscopes that had a cage around it at 90 degree angles there were four circular uh, bars and it would actually flip because when it actually went over the flywheel would not hit the table that's the reason why that cage is around that really cheap gyroscope and I grew up with those but I don't actually happen to have one you can probably find them on eBay for ten dollars um, one of the things that years ago that I talked about and I made this discovery that uh, there's actually a processional lag on every magnet and this is the reason why seed exposure is so brilliant and thousands of people have done that experiment and validated what I said and I was just extending out what Rawls and Davis had said in their book but Rawls and Davis didn't know what was causing it they knew that South Pole exposure on seeds would uh, drastically uh, increase uh, germination uh, fewer dead seeds they smell better they taste better I've got countless videos proving that experiment and we've known for decades um, that birds navigate via magnetism but that's descriptive. That doesn't explain anything. And I said, well, I discovered how birds navigate. And I had various people years ago, when I talk about this in videos, say, well, we know birds navigate via magnetism. And I said, well, we do know that fact, but my point being is that my discovery is how do they navigate? Because no animal on Earth um, can actually see the magnetic field. You can actually feel a magnetic, uh, really strong magnetic field in the tip of your nose and your lips and also too in your eyes. And your eyes are called cryptochromes. Birds have them and human beings too have them. This is, it's almost like drinking a pot of uh, coffee late at night when you actually experiment over top of my monster magnet. It's called cryptochromes. You can look that up. It's in the human eyeballs as well. But we actually have these uh, magnetoreceptors in our nose and our lips. But how do birds navigate via magnetism? That was uh, my discovery. Since they can't see magnetism, how are they then navigating via magnetism? And the answer was uh, my discovery of the phase disparity, uh, like the thousand plus videos I have using the supercell. I'd place the magnet underneath the supercell, and I know immediately which is the North Pole and the South Pole of the magnet, because the South Pole is uh, blue shifted, and the Red Pole is, uh, is, uh, is a red shifted. The North Pole is a red shifted, excuse me, the South Pole is blue shifted. This is what happens when I think about ten things at once. South Pole is always blue shifted. So even if you have one color, it will actually, in the case of white light LEDs, or even sunlight for that matter, you put a magnetic field behind it, you'll actually see a phase disparity, and the phase disparity exists in proportionality of one to five. By the way, if you want to know what a phase disparity is in proportionality, you can actually take an egg, you know what an egg shape is, and if you actually cut it along its, uh, its uh, horizontal axis, you actually have the pointy tip having a volume or ratio of one, and the base having a volume of five, 1.618. The same thing exists on uh, the magnetic field. There's this phase disparity. This is also, too, the reason for geomagnetic processional torque, or the Lamore frequency. So, and not all birds can see color. I forget what the exact percentage is. A lot of birds only see in monochrome. But, I mean, even in the case of the white light LED on the supercell, which I have a thousand videos on, you can see immediately which is, which is red shifted, which is blue shifted. Well, there, this is more bluish in color, even though it's white light LEDs all the way around. So, that's the South Pole. This is more reddish, therefore, that's the North Pole. So, even birds whether they be uh, monochromatic vision or whether they can see in color,
can tell whether they're navigating, you know, which direction they're navigating relative, you know, to the North Pole and the South Pole. So they do navigate via magnetism, but not directly, rather indirectly. And that was my discovery. And I was actually attacked years ago for that. Once again, we supposed to say, well, we know birds navigate via magnetism. Yes, but I told them that no ornithologist expert on birds or no scientist could tell you how, because no animal on Earth or human or anything can see the magnetic field. It's the magnetic field effect upon something else, in this case, the light. So that's a little secret. I'm going to spin up this gyroscope and talk about something here. Also in live stream, everybody was talking about the fact that the, uh, the Earth's core has uh, changed direction. How they were actually able to determine this is that seismic viscosity uh, changes in the Earth are determinable because earthquake on one side of the Earth will echo through the Earth, and by actually examining the, the seismic viscosity vectors of uh, the shock waves passing through the Earth from one side of the Earth to the other, they're able to determine that uh, the Earth's uh, core is spinning in the other direction. Uh, I've never been any sort of alarmist, and I've said many thousands of times that None of us are going to be around to see the Earth's poles flipping, neither you nor me. I mean, it could happen, but it's incredibly unlikely. I think what the average pole flip is something like 30,000 years, is it not? It's something like 20 or 30,000 years. How we actually know this is a magnetic particle particulate in, uh, I think, a sandstone type of rock in various places of the Earth. We'll notice, like, well, this layer is uh, flipped this way and this layer is flipped this way and uh, the time period between those layers we're able to determine that it's something, I forget, it's like 30,000 years. Anyway, what's currently happening is the Earth's uh, changing uh, core is changing uh, direction. This apparently happens every uh, 70 years. Now, let's get on to cosmic de induction and something important because this is really important because I've been asked this a million times and I've never made a video about it. We know that the Earth's magnetic magnetosphere Everybody kind of knows about it, more or less, and people have told me this in countless live streams, like, yes, I know that is the case. You know, molten steel cannot hold a point source field, i.e., be a magnet. You know, the Earth's core is molten. And I said, well, this is true. And then people say, well, where did the Earth's magnetosphere coming from? Well, the Earth's magnetosphere is not coming from the Earth. You can actually take a really powerful magnet and a steel ball and actually get within proximity to it within the magnetic field of say like an N40 gauss which is better than N42 or N50 gauss and that little steel ball will be induced by the large magnet and you could take that little steel ball and while it is within the sphere of influence of that powerful magnet will actually pick up other metal particles there's thousands of videos of this children do this so the actual magnetic field of that powerful magnet is causing induction of point source similarity within the ferromagnetic um, steel ball, for example, which will be able to pick up other things, and it will have its own magnetic field. Um, there's a, a buddy of mine, his name is George Mizell. He's in Alabama. He's a very brilliant man, even though he's got, you know, a lot of people think if someone has a really strong southern accent that they know they ain't too smart. He's actually incredibly intelligent. He used to be the largest seller of permanent magnets in the United States. You can find him on YouTube. He's got tons of videos. This is, it goes by the name Super Magnet Man. He called me a few years ago. We talked about this, and I mentioned it, and we both agreed instantaneously. It's not like one influenced the other or vice versa. It was like, yes, I've been, you know, saying this uh, for some time, however, not in videos, rather in discussion of magnetism with other people. So he agrees with me, by the way. This is, uh, the Earth's magnetosphere is not emanating from the Earth. It is a case that, of course, a molten steel core cannot hold a point source field itself. In other words, the Earth is not a permanent magnet. The magnetic induction is occurring from the Sun. This is called solar induction. In this case, of course, it is the Earth's uh, magnetic solar induction. The Earth uh, undergoes pole flip roughly every 11 years. It affects the ionosphere. Every ham radio operator, which I used to be, knows about this. Sunspot activity, by the way, is uh, uh, magnetic uh, um, uh, prominences of the sun, of which we get these flare loops that exist due to the changing and flipping and due to geomagnetic precession of any um, magnetic field. And this, of course, is where we get the phases spreading. You ever, like, uh, spun up an egg, and of course an egg is egg-shaped, you know, it's like a weeble-wobble. 
you know, it'll sit there and weeble wobble just like a gyroscope. It will start to process. This is called, you can look this up, it's called the Lamore frequency or geromagnetic processional torque. There's also, too, something very fascinating and and it's called a T, look up T handle in space, T handle. It's called uh, the Zhabinikov effect. There's actually a T handle that a guy spins up on the space station and actually spin it up like this and there's a, a point sticking out here because it's T handle. It'll start to process and it'll flip. If you actually extrapolate out the tip of the end of the T handle, it will actually process out and draw out. If you have, able to have a pin on the end of it, it will trace out a torus. This is a fascinating effect of the gyroscopic effect. By the way, of course, everybody's seen, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Eric Lathwaite. He's got dozens of videos, like from the 70s or 80s, on the gyroscopic effect. And <clears throat> something that nobody could ever explain, they'll actually give you descriptions, but they can't explain the gyroscopic effect. There's many different videos other YouTubers have done. They'll spin up really heavy flywheels with a long handle on the end of it. In the case of Eric Lathwaite, you can look him up. Uh, type in uh, uh, gyros type in heavyweight gyroscope. There's many videos by various people. It's a 40 pound weight. You can't even take two hands and lift the, the darn thing up. But uh, they use actually a, a power tool and they spin up the, the heavy weights on the end of the pole. It's 40 pounds. Can't pick it up with two hands on the end of like about a four foot pole. But once spun up, you can actually lift the weight up. You'll say, well, the 40 pounds are still the 40 pounds regardless. I mean, spinning it up, the 40 pounds are still there. And people say, well, this is due to uh, the, uh, <clears throat> this is due to uh, angular momentum. And it'll give you the equation. You can look that up. It's like looking up uh, uh, Ohm's law or looking up uh, the lens effect. And this is a description, not an explanation. The actual answer for geomagnetic uh, processional weight loss, even though the weight is still there, because weight has many different variables. Yeah, people say, well, weight is weight is weight. It's always 40 pounds. This is true. Um, but weight is, actually it has seven primary variables. And I talked about this in a video years ago. It is location specific, vector specific, uh, distance specific. Like if you change, uh, like you say, you have a 100 pound weight X distance from the earth, for example. It's 100 pounds here on the surface. But if you're able to instantaneously transport it way out into space, right? or actually high up in the atmosphere, it'll actually change weight. It's like, well, you know, it's 100 pounds is 100 pounds. Like, well, people don't understand that weight has many different variables. Specifically what is going on in the case of Eric Lathwit, and this has been done by countless people. I thought about building one once, but it's too big of a pain in the, uh, the butt. It's specifically ether hysteresis. Um, speed of light is ether hysteresis. Uh, this is also too called the rate of induction by actually spinning up a mass and all matter is nothing other than super high energy light. And by the way, I could actually uh, explain uh, the uh, Zhabinikov effect and circular frequency. Circular frequency in the case of hydrogen, hydrogen is just stable light or super high energy light. You have a circular frequency which is actually h greater than the rate of induction or i.e. the ether hysteresis for propagation to occur. Light of course is not an emission as uh, Nikola Tesla famously said nothing other than a sound wave in the ether, which is accurate, but sound is not an emission, it's a disturbance of the air. The same is true of light. This is a disturbance of the medium. That medium, of course, is the ether. Explaining how, when you spin up a 40-pound weight, in the case of Eric Lathwaite's video, you can't pick it up with two hands, but you spin it up, you get it at a, a low friction bearing, you're able to pick it up with one hand. And you, you got to ask any scientist on this, well, that's uh, angular momentum, you can look up the equation anywhere in line. That is a description, that's not an explanation. The simple explanation for the gyroscopic effect and the fascinating effects of a gyroscope is called ether hysteresis. Yes? You're able to spin it up fast enough, it becomes a circular frequency. This is called, by the way, it's called the uh, Zhabinikov effect. You can look that up online. It's a D, a D Z H A N I B E K O F. Uh, the Zhabinikov effect. But you don't speak Russian, at least most of you don't. This is a low friction gyroscope. Um, I'm going to spin up using this little Dremel tool here. Once again, of course, it doesn't have the cage on it, but you'll start to see. I'm going to actually make it sta steady as possible. It'll do the same thing on a table, even though my hand is not steady. You see the tip 
starts to process. Now, the Earth processes, what, at once full procession. Of course, this wheel is spinning infinitely faster than the Earth is, but the Earth's uh, full processional circle is, what, every 24,000 years, I believe? But if it had a cage around this, like the cheap gyroscopes that they used to sell back in the day in toy stores, however, which they were not low-friction bearings uh, like this is, it would flip over. And if you actually have a really low friction gyroscope with a cage around it, and, and all the friction is in the air and the bearings at the, uh, the two points, it will flip over. And the reason why it flips over, you can see the same thing. Type in T handle in space. T handle, T hyphen handle in space. You'll actually see the uh, Zhabinikov effect. It'll actually show the T handle will start to process and it will flip over immediately and there's basically uh, it's just one solid piece. It's nothing being spun up other than the handle being spun, and uh, and uh, there's no uh, there's nothing resting on anything. It's just it's in a free fall on the International Space Station, for example. You'll actually see it start to process and it'll flip over. And if you actually were able to put a pin on the end of that, what it draws out, and there are many animated videos of this, a GIF of the Zhabinikov effect, it traces out a torus. It is the precession or the three-dimensional force vector working its way out. This simplifies nature so, so, so divinely in explaining the gyroscopic effect. There's not a scientist on this earth, and I mean this literally, not my opinion. They can tell you, like, how is it that, you know, there's this 40-pound weight on the end of a pole. You can't pick it up. doesn't matter how strong you are. It's basically impossible. Maybe Schwarzenegger could pick it up. Maybe. A little bit. But this spindly arm Eric Lathwaite, you know, gets it spun up. And there are many videos by this by many different people. How is it that it loses weight? Well, it doesn't lose weight at all. What you actually have is ether hysteresis. The gyroscopic effect is the ether hysteresis, which is no different than actually saying the, uh, 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 well, the hysteresis of the ether, ether hysteresis, or the rate of induction. In other words, the rate of induction at which the spinning mass is affected such that part of that weight, and people, once again, this is not my opinion, it's a fact, if you transport something instantaneously relative to something else, the weight changes. Weight is vector-specific, location-specific, medium-specific, like a little child can never pick me up. I weigh 250 pounds, right? Well, of course I do. No child could pick me up. But what if, you know, I, I put on my Speedo? No, I don't have a spare Speedos. What if I put on my Speedos and gun? That's, that's taking you to. What if I put on my board shorts? There we go. I was trying to make be funny. And jumped in some water. Well, any, you know, spindly little person, you know, a little person could pick me up and lift me and move me. What's changed? I still weigh the same. What's changed, of course, is the medium. People really are brain locked when it comes to weight. They think, well, 200 pounds is 200 pounds. It's like, well, you, yeah, you, conventionally it is here on Earth, yes, but you change the medium, you change the vector, you change the distance instantaneously. Instantaneous action at a distance is not comprehended by any of these atomists, by the way. Then the weight changes. Weight is not fixed. It is not a fixed thing at all. People don't understand that. This is a low friction English gyroscope, but I wish it had a cage around it because once it starts to process, fully starts to process, and this is called torque, geromagnetic processional torque, i.e. lag, i.e. the Lamore frequency, just in the same proportionality between the North Pole and the South Pole, but which is also too on the atomic level. The proportionality of that is a ratio of one to five. Torque builds up. The Earth processes. Earth precession, look at it. You see this gyroscope is actually starting to process. In the case of the Earth, I think it's, what, once every 24,000 years? Um, so this is called geomagnetic precession. Um, I love asking people, like, how can you pick up 40 pounds when you spin it up? Well, that's uh, angular momentum. You could look that up. Saying angular momentum, of course, is merely descriptive. It's not explicative. It's not an explanation at all. You can watch many of Eric Lathwaite's videos, which I've watched them years and years and years ago. I think they're from the 80s. So, um, But the Earth does not emit a magnetic field. You, you need a steel ball and a halfway powerful magnet. You get the steel ball within the influence of uh, the powerful magnet, and the little steel ball will act like a magnet. You remove the magnet, it's a little steel ball again with no uh, ferromagnetic capabilities. Everything is magnetoreactive. It doesn't matter if it's paramagnetic, diamagnetic, or uh, ferromagnetic. Everything is magnetoreactive. Yeah? 
I kind of made a funny joke last night. I said everything is, uh, is uh, reactive, like attractiveness, for example. Say you have an ugly person and like a beautiful person, and the, you know, the beautiful person. There's a beautiful person attracted to another beautiful person, right? It's like, well, they would say that was ferromagnetic analogously. What if you replace the beautiful guy with a really, really ugly guy? It's like, well, the, the other person is repulsed. They're reactive, too. So it doesn't matter if it's ugly or beautiful, you still get a reaction. Everything is magnetoreactive because the entire universe of mass and magnitude is due to one thing and one thing only, that being magnetism. Explaining the circular frequency, I'm going to do this in greater detail, but there are a lot of GIFs and stuff online, i.e. Uh, GIFs. I should say GIFs, right? A little uh, video, computer animations of uh, the uh, Zhabinikov effect, which traces out a torus and explaining... Hydrogen, which is super high energy stable light, is a circular frequency. A lot of people also, too, same way they can't wrap their mind around weight, they cannot wrap their mind around the idea of circular frequency. It's not some sort of lofty idea. This is the reason why matter, and all matter, of course, is compounded hydrogen. Hydrogen, of course, is the most fundamental matter, and it's just many multiplicatives above that of gamma radiation. That was my discovery, too. I predicted years ago that it would be discovered that constructive interference between super high energy light would produce matter. And that was discovered like a year and a half ago. I made that prediction first. I knew it was because I knew matter must fundamentally be super high energy light. Proven 100% correct on that. Um, but yeah, look up T-handle in space or, and look up uh, the uh, Zhabinikov uh, effect, effect. But poles flipping is just simplex geomagnetic precession or geomagnetic torque. And the Earth's magnetosphere is not emanating from the Earth because the skeptics have rightly asked, well, you're the expert on magnetism. How do you, where does the Earth's magnetosphere come from? Because the Earth is molten, which everybody agrees upon, and a molten mass immediately degausses. You know, it cannot hold a magnetic field. Of itself, that is correct. And this is where the Earth's magnetosphere comes from, which is not emanating from the Earth. It is solar induction. And uh, the United States' largest seller of uh, magnets, uh, George Mizell, is in Alabama, and he has a YouTube channel with hundreds of videos on magnetism also. We both instantaneously agree. We both knew the same thing. We talked about it. Like, yes, yes, yes. It's kind of like one of those aha moments where he's like, yeah, I didn't know anybody else out there knew that too. We're both experts in magnets, even though he doesn't understand magnetism, which is fine. You know, I spent countless thousands of hours crushing my brain on that one. Uh, he crushed his brain on many, many other things, but he's a very smart guy. Um, so anyway, there's the answer to uh, the Earth's magnetosphere, uh, answer to geomagnetic precession, specifically it's just ether hysteresis. Ether hysteresis explains the gyroscopic effect, and I use the word explain, not describes. Talking about angular momentum does not tell you how all of a sudden you could pick up a 40-pound weight on the end of a stick with one hand when before you couldn't even do it with two hands. Because people really are brain-locked on this word weight. Weight has seven different variables. Location, vector, medium, distance, and there's three other obscure ones which I've got written down and it escapes my brain all of a sudden for some reason. So, I hope you liked this video and I hope it simplified things. It means explaining the uh, Earth's magnetosphere makes it very simple. It also, too, explains the geomagnetic, uh, excuse me, the uh, gyroscopic effect of uh, assumed weight loss, which no scientist can explain. Sure, it's explicable. It's just angular momentum. There's an equation for it. That's a description, not an explanation. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. You're able to contact me. My information is in the description below. Any donations are always warmly welcome. Or you can send me an email. I love talking with people. Goodbye.